right, guys, welcome back. So I just got done towing this D3 off to the job, out to the job site, and uh, did a few passes already, uh, getting cut down here. And we have to rip this down uh, 12 to 18 inches, as you can see. Started ripping, uh, I'm doing, you know, between each tine. So you know, rip here, then just go one tine over, rip again, and so on and so forth. Uh, the D3 is just about the right size for this kind of a job. I always, you know, you can always use something bigger, more horsepower, but in this size of a job site, uh, it's not really necessary. Um, so this is the same job that we were on earlier in the year and a little bit in last year. And we got delayed due to rain. Uh, so we just covered the entire job site, tarped it all off. And uh, now we have to undo what we did on the first lift. So about a foot foot and a half uh, to start building this entire job site back up to grade. So I'm cutting it down here, trying to, you can see that little dip right there. I'm trying to cut everything down level because it gets really high over there. Give, it, give us a good starting section again. Um, that's pretty much it. Today's just gonna be running the D3 and we got the R630 over there. Uh, we're moving everything we stockpiled at that corner uh, about a week or two ago. So we're just uh, slowly getting a few things prepped up. So as it dries out, we're ripping this here to dry out and then recompact. Uh, that's our process that we have going on right now. So uh, just enjoy. I'm just gonna be running a D3. I'll see if I can point out a few pointers if you guys are thinking about running one of these or if you wanna use one or you just wanna know how the heck these things get operated. Uh, these ones, they do come GPS ready. Usually, I don't think this one is. It has a monitor box for it but it doesn't have the the plugins or anything. Usually the new D3s uh, and the D4s and stuff like that, they have, um, they're preset for GPS for your Trimble or your Topcon system. They, they mount down right here. And usually you have a actual box right here that the machine already knows where it's at. The machine does have its own uh, level system in it. So you have your percentages on, on, uh, you know your elevation gain and your slope so it kind of gives you a good rough estimate and usually stuff like that if you're operating an older machine you need to have the seat feel you gotta sit on a level area and then the moment you start operating you'll see i mean you'll get be a degree or two off and you'll feel the machine rotate and that's just all in the seat time that's what you got to do but these things are pretty dang easy to operate um here i'll get this sucker turned on here See, you got your uh, elevation gain and uh, your slope on the machine right here. So if I were to take my blade, turn on the hydraulics, if I go like that, lift it up, it starts kicking me out. So I'm going to bring it back to level and bam, just like that. So on the newer machines, you have an actual system on it where it's going to show you the degrees of where the blade's at compared to the machine and they have their own set of automatics so i mean it can help you out it's a not the best way to learn you want to learn by actual feel and figure out the machine itself this is that kind of machine but you have something to go off of being where the machine's actually sitting at in degrees and elevation and slope um, so those are the basics this is all right here this is your blade control got your up down and then uh your tilt and then this button right here is to windrow your material that's your uh, hello flapper right there and then right here you got all your drive so i'll rev this guy up a little bit so you got your drive forward and then uh, this adjusts your speed on the machine so Take it out of park. So we're in neutral right now, and uh, you can see that's adjusting the speed for forward and reverse. You go forward, you stop. That's neutral, and then I'll slow down to go reverse. There's your reverse right there. And then if I hold it down, you saw it slows down to a crawl. And here, right there, this is going to be. That's pretty much your brake and your decelerator on engine RPM. So if you're going forward and you kind of lose track and you got to stop, that's the best way to use it because that's going to stop the machine dead in its tracks. And I'll show you that here right now. See, 
kills the engine RPM and it stops the machine. If I were to use that with just the joystick here, it's gonna come to a lot softer of a stop. So we'll do that. These ones, these hydrostatic systems actually come to a stop pretty quick still. But if you wanna go slower than you wanna go and uh, your engine's RPM's too high, you can always use that foot pedal right there. So. And you can't even come to a dead stop. So that's the best way to operate it. Um, so those are the kind of the basics. Uh, on these buttons, uh, on other machines, these turn on automatics and different functions. This right here, uh, cap it in for a point shake. So if you hit that button right there, you'll see. So that's gonna shake off all the material on the machine. So uh, when you're done with a cut, you can just shake it off. You don't have to keep on doing this to the joystick and wearing it out. So they put a nice button in there for you. Uh, this is a def system machine. I think this thing's 95 horsepower if I remember right. Um, and it weighs 18, 19,000 pounds. Um, it's kind of the basics of it. That's kind of the 101 on running the dozer. I'll just, uh, I'm just gonna operate and uh, kind of get this job site up to where we need it to be uh, and before we're done for the day. So I'll let you guys watch. And just real quick before you guys get bored watching me use this machine, I'm going to be doing a few voiceovers. Just because this thing had an open cab, I couldn't really talk to the camera because you wouldn't have heard anything I said. So as we go on, you'll hear me kind of click in here and there about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So the reason why I'm blading this spot a little bit more than others, there was a lot of collected moisture on there over the season. So I'm taking that wet material, mixing it in with the dry, and I'm able to get a little bit lower in the pad so I can rip further down into that lift. And then we can pass our initial test so we can start lifting this pad when we can compact it.
So right here you can tell I am overloading these rippers. This is not a convenient or effective way to do this. You're not gaining anything except for burning more fuel and slowing down your production on the job. Rippers are not just a set it and forget it kind of a thing. You got to keep on adjusting them. Make sure they're not too low. Make sure you're ripping down far enough. It strains your neck. It's just like, I don't know if anybody's run a skip loader before, but it's a backbreaker and a neck strainer for sure. You got to always keep an eye on these things. So one thing to add in over here, you can see me trying to turn to get this material stockpiled for my partner to take it to the next spot. When you turn with the dozer, you're reducing power from one track and putting all that power to the other. And when you do that, you lose traction and you lose mobility and you're no longer going forward. So if you get too far off path, it's best to stop the dozer rotate a little bit and then continue on because the moment you start splitting that power from the tracks you stop moving especially when you have a loaded blade and with a dozer you should always have a loaded blade of course depending on what specifics you're doing but 90 percent of the time you will have a loaded blade so if this is a yard and a half two yard blade you want a yard and a half yard three quarters in that blade at all times
So another tip to add when you're running a dozer, when you first begin your ground engagement with the blade, you want to start slow. Get the blade in the ground, then get the machine into the cut and start doing small adjustments. When you go fast, you're never going to be able to catch up with the blade compared to the machine because as your blade goes into the cut, your machine's going to drop into the cut and then your blade's going to rise. And then when you see your blade rise, you're going to push your blade back down, then your machine is going to go back up and then your blade's going to come up and then that's how you get a great rhythm section for your dirt bike, but that's not what you're looking for on a job site. You want smooth, flat, clean cuts. I'll tell you what, using those rippers the entire day, it's a little bit of a crick in your neck. Uh, so I'm letting him run it. He's been one to learn how to run a dozer for a while. So I gave him a quick little one-on-one like I did with you guys uh, with the dozer. I mean, he's he's operated one just from, uh, you know, one park install to the next. So he wants to actually learn how to use it. He's only using the rippers today. I told him if he feels like it, mess around with the blade, get a feel for it. Uh, because I, I messed up in one spot on purpose because you guys can see real quick with the blade if you if you try to go too quick you can never catch yourself in the act because by the time you start engaging the ground with the blade and then the moment the machine sets down into the ground your your blades going back up and then you're trying to readjust the blade to go back down and your machines going up and then you just that's how you get those whoops all, all over your project and you don't want to do that type of stuff it just it looks rookie looks terrible and then you got to go back and fix it so if you just go slow the first time it's going to save you time the more you get comfortable you know uh you got gps and you're you got a good holding on it and everything like that then you can you know start boosting up the speed but the moment you start first getting into the ground you want to go slow you want to get the machine into the cut and then go from there um another big thing too uh, I'll probably do it. I'm, I'm, like, like I said on my voiceovers, have your blade loaded. You want to have a loaded blade. What I mean, again, is having material in front of the blade. Like that's a two yard blade on that machine. You want to have a yard and a half or two yards in it all the time. Well, I mean, of course, depending on what you're doing, you want to be able to be sure you're able to fill in your low spots and then cut the high spots. You have a material coming and going on the blade the entire time when you're using it. Um, another thing, you know, when you start tilting and rotating and, you know, doing wind rows, you can have your blade at one section, but when, the moment you go to rotate it, one side's going to be a lot steeper of an angle or more extreme than the other side. And then you're going to lose sight of one side of the blade if you're trying to do an extreme wind row over to one side. So everything just takes practice. Get your guys' seat time in on running a dozer. A small one like this is great. Run a D1, D2, D3. Those are all great. And uh, go slow. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. Go slow, get the seat time in, get a good feel for the machine, get comfortable with it, make sure you know how to operate it, stop it, all that type of stuff, because those are the biggest safety things. You know, wear your seatbelt. That thing will, if you huck and buck real bad and you get off of a, a ledge, 
that machine will throw you in the seat real hard. And it's done it to me once or twice on this job already. I wasn't paying attention when I was backing up. I already came up and over a crown. Right when I backed up, the machine will just fall down extremely hard. You got a good chair, it gives you a little bit of cushion, but be careful, be safe with it. And uh, one thing I want to explain also, when you're wind rowing the blade, it's going to want to push your machine that way. So if, you're, if, you're, if your blade's angled like this and you're pushing, it's going to start kicking your entire dozer out that way. And you're going to need to stop and readjust and go again. It's very hard to turn when you have a fully loaded blade because when you're turning, you're starting to subtract power from one track and it's going all the way to the other one. So you're just going to spin track and destroy your job. Um, and you're just burning up track. That's about it. It's You're not going to go anywhere with it. So if you need to, stop, reposition yourself, hit the pile again, and keep on going. Because with the loaded blade, with all that weight in the front, the machine doesn't want to turn anymore. It's not going to do it. You need to have both tracks 50-50 or 100% on both tracks moving forward at all times. The moment one track stops, the other one's just going to slip. You're losing all your grip, all your power right there on that one track. Um... So those are a few things I want to like reiterate with you guys. Uh, this dozer weighs supposedly 17,900 pounds or uh, with the rippers, supposedly 18,700 pounds. I looked it up uh, when I ate some lunch here. So it's not too heavy. I mean, it's heavy, but it's not too heavy. The, the 3,500 tows it just fine, especially with the new trailer. It, it, this was a very, very easy tow. I don't know why. I was honestly a bit nervous this morning about towing this, but now I'm looking at it, it, it really was not that much weight. It was super comfortable to tow with, just like my other video. Um, it hooks and bucks you around just a little bit. He's getting used to it already. He's been in there for five minutes since I've been talking to this camera. Um, and I don't know what the heck I just said on the voiceover, so I'm gonna do all that when I get back home. But hopefully this guy, is, this gives you a good little one-on-one -on, -one on the dozer and uh, you know another view of uh, what we got going on with the job site since it's been such a long haul of a job this uh job's been sitting over my head for far too long we're almost done with it i want to get done and not have to come back for a while uh, the moment we're done here they're gonna start building houses and uh, i feel bad for the owner of this property because man this job has been a lot of work for a half acre of property we filled in that this entire thing was a retention pond. If you guys haven't seen the old videos, it was uh, 14, 15 feet deep over here. And we had to excavate the entire job site out down to virgin ground and then lift it all back up. And uh, if you guys want to, you can uh, check all my past videos. I'll see if I'll figure out how to post it up at the corner or something like that. I don't know how they do it. I'll figure it out. Um, huge holes and a lot of work we had a you know we had a cat uh, 320 excavator a 315 out of 950 wheel loader out here and we were just going to town just digging a monstrous pond out here again because at first they have a bunch of houses being built out over there on that side and they were taking all their spoils and dumps and just dumping them in here because uh, that's what the old land owner wanted to fill this in but they didn't do it right they never compacted anything so we had to take everything back out of the hole we made a mountain of dirt piles on that side and on that side as tall as these houses because we don't have much job site room uh it's been a process but uh Again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, just enjoy watching a dozer work. It's a small one, but it gets the job done on a job site like this. Again, it's a D3K2XL. It has 250 hours on it. I don't even know what year it is, but it gets the job done. It's not too bad. I definitely like enclosed cabs better, so I uh, would be able to talk to you guys, but I can't because I think it's real loud on the inside. I can't, I can't even hear myself talk when I'm on that thing. Um, other than that, Thank you guys for watching. Please like the video if you liked it and uh, please subscribe. Have a good one.